gone. And I didn't I didn't know I was supposed to be vamping. Vamping like the vampire. Mr. Meyer. Stuck in the muck. Something suck. Better rapper than Greg. Dirtiest boy alive. Something, something. Jason, come back. You already had your wine. When are you open it up now? I'm back. Cool. All right, I got a uh, I got a glass of wine. I've got a Yeti of water, and I've got a Yeti of mixed drink. I'm I am ready to go, baby. It's a good idea. All my fluids. Gotta get my fluids. He's got fluids. I'm so fluid. I'm fluid. Karch is a druid. Hey, I Putting was you to it. I was rapping while you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody. Today is June 12th, and we are never free to play, a podcast where we talk about all the video games we wish we were playing. I'm one of your hosts, Karch Palasti, joined by my co-host, Jason Wright. If you decide you hate us, the best way to prove your hate is to give us money. It makes us cry. Don't believe us? Try it. Go ahead. We'll wait. You can find us at neverfreetoplay.com, patreon.com slash neverfreetoplay, or on all the other social media where we are. Never free to play. If you have questions, comments, thoughts, ideas, feedback, please send it to us at neverfreetoplay at gmail.com. Jason, how are you doing? I am doing pretty well, my friend. I am uh, I'm having a very true to brand week, you know, very never free to play this week, but um but it's all good. A uh, couple of notes for me. Um my wife is having a movie night with her mom, so my I was in charge of bedtime. My son is still awake, but he he is in his bed reading. Um, so if I have to go, uh, you know, tuck him back in or something, then we'll just cut. We'll cut around it. Um, by the same token, my dog is roaming around out in the house. So if you hear barking, that is on our end. But I have my glass of wine. I have my mixed drink. I have my water, and I have my never free to play shirt, and I am ready to rock and roll. Oh yeah! How about you, Karch? How you doing, man? I'm all right. It was a day. It was a busy day, work wise. Anyway, yeah. Mentally it stinks to have a uh, busy day on a Friday. Yeah, I mean, it was good though. Like, I, I it was mostly an educational day for me. I learned a lot. I'm going to start uh, doing some programming instead of just testing. <laughs> For work, like some like legit for work coding, because I know you had been taking those kind of like self uh, teaching. Cl- I don't know what you call them, but like the courses on the side. Yeah, that you've they, been doing. They're going to throw me into the deep end, basically. They gave me a, you know, a bug that doesn't matter per se. <laughs> like it doesn't <laughs> doesn't matter if it takes me a day or seven days to fix it. Yeah, but yeah. Cool, man. Well, okay, that's that's neat. One more, well, one step closer to the never free to play game. Yeah. Exactly. We'll make it ourselves. All right. So we got a big episode. We're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5 event, and then we're going to segue right into a Last of Us spoiler cast uh, because I finally finished the game about a week ago, and Jason's been dying to talk about it. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, Just a little housekeeping first, though. Follow us on Twitter and subscribe on YouTube. Like, share, subscribe, etc. And also write in to everfreetoplay at gmail.com. And then the last note is that we will be changing our recording release schedule. So we are going to try to record on Thursdays. Yesterday was a bust due to some, uh, to some scheduling errors. And then the podcast and YouTube will go up simultaneously on Monday. So Jason will have more time on the weekend. Greg will have more time on the weekend uh, to go ahead and edit and get that stuff posted. And I'll have more time on the weekend to not do anything on that side. <laughs> hey, you got to write the uh, episode description and, you oh, know, the titles and all that, man. Mm-hmm. That's true, your true. job. That's true. Yeah. Because I, or- I already forgot about it. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> so no shout outs, no corrections. Because Hold on. Of- I got oh, one shout out. Oh, one shout out. Okay. One shout out to Uncle Mike. Uh, Caitlin told me my Uncle Mike might be interested. Uh, Caitlin is Lauren's cousin and she told me Uncle Mike might be interested in the podcast. I'm going to send it to him this week. So Uncle shout out to Mike. Uncle Mike. Who might be a first-time listener. Sweet. Might be. Or he might not. He may never hear this. I don't know. Well, I hope he likes PlayStation because that's about all we're going to talk about today. (laughs) I don't think he has one, but you know. All right. Speaking of PlayStation, Sony had their PlayStation 5 console release event yesterday at 1 p.m. Pacific. 
and it was pretty cool. So overall, Jason, how'd you feel? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs in like sideways. Sideways. Me. All right. But it, and I've had some time to digest it. I, honestly, like if I'm leaning one way, I'm, th- I'm leaning thumbs up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, my initial reaction was like, that didn't feel like other console reveals, but this just simply we are, it's a totally different circumstance. And, you know, with there being no E3, I kind of had to just think about it differently and accept it. And since, since I've had time to digest it, like I'm, I would say overall thumbs up. What about you? Yeah. Um, thumbs up for me overall as well. Um, we'll get into details here in a moment, but, um, I didn't have, I, I mean, I left, I was elated, I guess to say, you know, exaggerated term to use, but I, I was feeling good about what I saw. Um, so yeah, here's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and run through the list because there were a lot of game announcements and or trailers for games that might have been known but hadn't really been shown off yet uh, for games that are all coming to PS5. So let's go ahead and run through those real quick and then we'll talk about specifics, what we liked, what we didn't like. We'll talk about the console specifically, what we liked and what we didn't like. And we'll go from there. So show, Sounds great. show kicks off and we get a little montage of a bunch of stuff. And and so the first thing, and I am going to stop on this. I didn't want to, but then I forgot how bad it was. Was it was the um, the GTA Five partnership announcement? As if this was anything to talk about. I was so confused by it because I saw the Rockstar logo. I was like, oh, cool. Maybe they're got it. Maybe they have a new IP. Maybe they're doing a sequel to an older game like Bully or something. And it was none of that. Nope. So I mean, I've never played GTA Five, so like it took me a good like couple of minutes before I was like sure that this wasn't anything new, but I can't think of a worse way to start this than something like this, a game that came out on PS three and three sixty, Right. Then like, you know, I, I don't want to say limped along because obviously it's done unbelievably successful, but right. it's just, it was a very bizarre opening. Anyway. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't a fan. I really wasn't. I was. I was so confused. Yeah, it, it was weird. Especially he's like, okay, let's get up, uh, let's get everybody's hopes up. You know, Rockstar, boom. What? Oh my gosh, what are they bringing? Oh, it's nothing. Okay, right. Oh, cool. Uh, the the one of their most successful games is going to be playable on the next gen console that we already knew was backwards compatible. Awesome. It's enhanced. Woo. All right. So uh, then, boom. This is what they should have opened with, which is Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is not a full-blown game. We'll talk about that in a bit. Then Gran Turismo Turismo, Turismo 7. So I guess it's been gone for a little while, and it's now it's back, and I'm sure racing fans are pretty stoked about that. It's been gone so long, you forget how to pronounce it. Exactly. Never played it either. So uh, Then, surprise, a Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. Great name, loving it. Then uh, Square Enix uh, with Luminous Studio Productions, a very short trailer for Project Athea. Athea? They, they love to name their games uh, like Project Blank and then just not change the name. Yes, yes, they do. Project Octopath Traveler. I, I guarantee you that's going to be the name when it comes out. Oh, I believed it. I didn't for a second think otherwise. So, <laughs> um, Then Stray, you're going to play a cat. That releases 2021. Uh, all cool. the other games don't have a date or a window as far as i'm aware we'll do some corrections i'm sure uh heavily next week on stuff we get wrong then we had da, 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 house mark with returnal which is one of the worst names i've ever heard um sumo digital announced Sackboy, a big adventure lucid studios announced destruction all stars which seemed interesting it's like fortnite meets rocket league meets overwatch yeah, is is my like what it what it what it seemed like to me, and actually like I, it looked pretty cool. It did. Um, then we had one of my favorite games announced so far, or of of the announcement of the event, which was I think it's Kenna or Kena, Bridge of Spirits, strong Ori, Will of the Wisp vibes, but in a far more like you know three D action adventure over the shoulder kind of exploration thing. I knew you would like that. Oh yeah, it's that's it a looked kind of like. Over fable but more asian influence and then they had like these little furby minions so that was which is very pikmin-esque so i'm i'm very excited about that game then we had 
when is it? Goodbye Volcano High. Goodbye Volcano. Okay, I only wrote goodbye and I was confused as to it. Yeah, so Goodbye Volcano High, which was a uh, 2D animated, kind of like really moody, introspective, like teenage coming of age drama. Dude, it was weird for me. Yeah. I, I feel I like I saw that. I was like, if anybody, if the two, one of the two of us is going to play this, it's going to be Karch. It was like these anthropomorphic lizards and there with this really serious introspective monologue. Um, and I wrote this, I was like, it looks and sounds like it was made by a second year art student. That's what I wrote. But- yeah. I, don't, I mean, I, I will almost, <laughs> I will almost definitely not be playing this, especially if it's just a walking sim. Like if there's gameplay, we don't have any clue what it is. Um, and it looks aside from the fact that, you know, the characters are like anthropomorphic dinosaur people, lizards, dinosaurs. Okay. They were, they were straight up dinosaurs. Okay. Anyway, um, there's nothing fantastic about it. So it seems very grounded, except for again, the fact that they're lizard people. It looked like they took all the worst parts of Persona 5 and was like, what if we made that game, but with like dinosaurs <laughs> and just skipped the combat part? Maybe. We'll see. All right. Then we had Lauren Lanning um, present his newest entry in the Odd World series. And I already forgot what it was called. What was it? Did you write it down? Soulstorm. Soulstorm. And that, yep. I don't know what to make of that game. I've never played any of the Odd World games. Have you? Nope. Okay. All right. Moving on. I like the art style, though. I'll say that. Yeah. Shinji Mikami presented Ghostwire Tokyo, which was interesting. Your first person, almost kind of like Dishonored-esque gameplay, but you're casting a lot more like spells and magic and range stuff, and you're fighting creepy Japanese-inspired spirits and ghosts in Tokyo. So that was cool. Then we had... 2021 for that one. Oh, thank you. Yep. Then we had uh, Super Brothers present Jet the Far Shore. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Holiday 2020. Really no idea what that is. Space travel seemed to be a component. Um, you know, at, at one point it shows you leaving a planet and hundreds of years passing in like the blink of an eye. So not sure, but you're probably going to be, you know, traveling space civilization, rebuild, et cetera. Kind of like No Man's Sky vibes getting from that. Then we had a game that was announced back in um, the Game Awards, which is Godfall which is coming holiday 2020. That's Gearbox's newest entry. Um, it's interesting. I'm, I'm definitely curious about it. I'll, I'll be looking for more videos and coverage and, and reviews and stuff. It's, it, you're in this really like really fantastic, you know, quote unquote, godlike armor is what they called it. Big weapons, swords, sword and shield, spears and stuff. Kind of. A, I, um, I'm stoked for this, man. Yeah, it looked great. It looked, you know, the, the gameplay looked solid, like kind of a cross between, monster hunter and god of war but like that's exactly what i have written down looks like a faster paced monster hunter uh slash god of war light is what Mm -hmm. i what i have noted for this yeah and so you know if if and it's probably going to be you know um games as a service like if i had to imagine you know there's going to be a reason to go and play you know hook up with your friends no it's not and and it can be fun and i it's something i don't normally do but you know it, it seems like something that both you and i would like at the same time for a change sure um, yeah. because, because it is like, it's meeting in the middle of those two things that we both kind of li- either liked or have wanted to like in the past. Yeah, exactly. Then, um, Annapurna presented, I don't know if it was a straight up sequel or if it was just a really similar styled game. Um, but I've heard spiritual successor, spiritual, or spiritual successor. sequel. Yeah. So solar ash, which, um, comes out 2021, uh, Annapurna known for hyperlight drifter, which I've never played. Have you played it? I have not, but I've it's been on my wish list. It's like one of those that I'm like, oh man, I, I want to play that. Uh what I have noted about this is that it's it had a very similar art style to Hyperlight, but it was kind of like more cell shaded, whereas Hyperlight was kind of more like eight bit. Like pixelated. Um, it, yeah, like pixelated, yeah. It is super artsy. Um and the music was very Zelda esque uh hmm. too at the end there. Um, anyway, that one's slated for 2021. And I do wonder on these that are slated for 2021, like, does that mean they're in the launch window or are they going to, they didn't give like a fall 2021 or whatever. So anyway, just interesting. Yeah. But, we'll, we'll talk about that on a whole, as far as release dates here in a little bit. Yeah. Um, then we had the Hitman three, right? It was just Hitman three. Yeah. Hitman three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool looking. Um, I've never played a Hitman game, believe it or not. Um, 
But I played them all. Well, no, that's not true. I played Hitman one and two, like the the newer ones. Right. But it was definitely one of the best looking games. Even if, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. And we did. We technically did see some gameplay for like half a second. Mm-hmm. Um, but that comes out January twenty twenty one. So that's that's probably the hardest date that we got. So we've gotten some holiday twenty twenties. Right. But this one narrows it down to a single month next year, which is I'm super stoked because I love Hitman, mm-hmm. and to me, Hitman is like the pinnacle of sandbox, and it's kind of interesting because I feel like. Not to go too far into things here, but I feel like when we originally got introduced to the idea of what what is a, a next gen sandbox game, I feel like that was kind of like the PS3 era, uh-huh. and um, and and I think for a short time there, sandbox and open world were open world were like analogous terms, uh-huh. but they've definitely since diverged, and to me, Hitman is the pinnacle of what sandbox games can be, um. And so I'm su- I'm very much looking forward to to jumping into this game, even never having uh, beaten Hitman one or two, just because I I never beat any game. But you know, I'm I'm stoked. Very astute. Yep, looks fun. And then we had an Astrobot game. What was the title on that one? Astro's Playroom. Astro's Playroom. Did you play the first one? I don't think you ever. Had I did this. not, but I played the demo that came with um, PSVR. Okay. And I got to say, it was like my favorite thing that I ever played in on PSVR. And I was just hoping and wishing. I was like, please let them make a 3D platformer in in PSVR. And then they did, but it was like after I had already sold my PSVR. So I never got to play the like the Astrobot dedicated. I want to say it was a VR game. It was. I, this, one, this one did not mention if it was for VR or not. They yeah. actually didn't mention playstation vr at all um so that was kind of interesting but yeah, also, it, it looked cute it looked a lot like um was this the one that looked a lot like no never mind that was a different one that looked a lot like uh mario uh what's the what's the name 3d world that, mm-hmm. that wasn't this one that was a different one that i have uh, that i have noted for that gotcha yep that was Sackboy. boy sorry yeah, for, for the VR thing, I, I saw a lot of people commenting on how it didn't look like it was in VR at all. And I know the original was, or the first one, mm-hmm. um, there was no like non-VR component. So maybe they went, they wanted to like, you know, like, reach as many people since it was so successful on the VR front. But and and that makes sense, but I don't know that that game would have been fun without it being in VR. So Maybe not. Next, we had uh, Little Devil Inside by Neostream. Uh, that looked really fun. One of my highlights. Uh, no date on that right now. Then NBA 2K21, Fall 2020. Turns out the New Orleans Pelicans is an actual team. I thought that was a joke. You're a joke. Come on, man. I don't watch basketball. Yeah, the, I don't watch basketball either, but I know who Zion is, and I know the Pelicans are a real team. Zion Williamson. Thank you. I wrote yeah. it down. You, anyway, a lot of, dude, a lot he's of, amazing. He's like the next <laughs> LeBron James. Anyway, keep, keep going. A lot, of, a lot of talk and buzz about the sweat physics. In oh, that. hold on. Little, little aside about Zion. Let, let me tell you something. Yeah, this go. kid is—he's a rookie, so he is very young. He's probably like twenty years old. At the beginning of the quarantine, uh, when when the companies weren't stepping up, he vowed to pay, I think, two or three months' salary for every. Um, like, ancillary. I, I don't want to use the word ancillary, but in every like, s- uh, like hourly worker that worked for the Pelican Stadium. So like all the concession stands people and all those people mm-hmm. that were gonna basically be furloughed because they canceled the NBA season. Zion was like, I will pick up the tab on that for like three months. Way to go! That's awesome. So- yeah, it is amazing, and I think he actually kind of inspired a lot of other players to do similar things, so good on him. I like Zion, and he's amazing. He's a good player, so anyway. Sweet. The Next, we had Bug Snacks, which was different. Um, <laughs> another holiday 2020 game. Um, I'll probably not pick this one up, but... <laughs> the, but the, the funny thing is the trailer looked so dumb until the end, and I was like, oh, no, it's very self-aware. That's kind of cool. Okay, oh, yeah, no, okay. I mean, I mean, Octodad was definitely this type of game, too. It was a very, like, goofy, self-aware, satirical, yeah. etc. kind of game. Um, but Octodad played off of intentionally bad controls, and that didn't look like what this was. No. And I am very, I'm very interested. Yeah. But anyway. 
reminded me a lot of um, FIFA Pinata. Uh, if you've ever seen or played that. Obviously, it's not that kind of game, but it just really strong Pinata vibes. So Then uh, Shuhei Yoshida presented Bluepoint's remaster of Demon Souls, which a lot of people knew was pretty much in the works from like a lot of heavy rumors on that front, but it was good to see. And it looked, you know, it was a cool cinematic. Um, might be one of the first you know, souls likes that I really try to dig into. So is it a re, this is something Greg asked me today. Is it a re, is it like a remake or, or is it, or just a remaster? It sounds like a remake. I, I, I'm okay, so that's what I thought too. quibbling about that. Um, but it, I guess it is important. They're different things. No, I dude. know they're, it's not, it's not like, Oh, I agree. They're different things, but like, I don't know. Can we just use the same word? And then, you know, no, because they're different. <laughs> but once we know, we know we don't have to, remind ourselves every single time anyway well, that's but i don't know okay anyway, anyway keep going uh, keep going then arcane studios with death loop which i was i was really yes. digging that style for real yes um the, i do want to say one thing about death loop yeah. here what we found out today or maybe it was yesterday um is that this is a console exclusive to ps5 which is it, kind is it of blew timed? my mind. I don't know if it's timed or not. I think I can't, it's timed. I think it I was... can't tell from the verbiage, but it's coming right. to PC day and date, um, which is probably where I will play it personally. But um, very cool. It had this like grindhouse vibe. Like I just I dug it, dude. This is and I love Dishonored and mm-hmm. Arcane was the um, also the developer for Dishonored, and this looked very much like Dishonored inspired but with kind of like a, it's a new ip and i'm so in anyway two two assassins stuck in a in a time loop trying to kill the same targets and each other yeah um, no i mean the pitch there. i've always wanted to try out one of their games dishonored one and two or um or prey but i missed the boat I on, both i missed the boat on all of them and it the settings didn't really like grab me to go back and try them but this one speaks to me <laughs> I really, really praise like it. um praise on Game Pass, dude. Oh well, pff, screw that. Then I'm just gonna. So I think. Yeah. I was gonna say I think you should try it out. Like I here's the reason I haven't gone back to pray. Mm-hmm. Um, Lauren's brother and I rented it on at like Redbox physically, and then I played like five, literally like five or six hours into a save, and then I had to return it, and I was just like, I'm not starting this over. But yeah, yeah I loved what I played of it. Yeah, I'll give it a try then. Sweet. Um, and then one of the like, just biggest surprises to me was Resident Evil, and at, as far as I'm aware, this is what they're calling it. They're calling it Resident Evil Village. They're not calling it Resident Evil 8, even though they did that really kind of like trippy, the, the V-I-L-L is the... That was cool. Yeah, that was a great reveal. That didn't, that I, like, I just didn't see it coming until like they smacked me in the face with it. <laughs> like, me neither, because the thing is, is when I think Resident Evil, I specifically think zombies but there were so many different enemies and i couldn't tell if there were like flashbacks or spirits or ghosts or there were like all these sorts of different enemy types that look like which was so cool and um yeah i mean i'm too much of a, a little baby to play scary games but right. man this one looked cool yeah i mean I'll, from what i gather watching other people's reactions and streams like this definitely builds upon um seven like quite a bit okay. so it could speak to why you were a little like why both of us were a little like, Oh, this doesn't seem like a resident evil game because they, they might be moving away or just in a slightly different direction that we're not aware of. Right. It's more action oriented than like survival horror. Well, not even that, just like the lack of the zombies thing. Like at one point you see, you straight up see a werewolf kind of guy. It's like, Oh, well that's cool, but that's not a zombie. So I don't know. Right. Then a really weird 2021. Sorry. 2021 on that one. 2021. Been a really weird trailer for a game that I have nothing to really say about called Pragmata. Um, nope. 2022. Spaceman, hologram, little girl, hologram cat, spaceman approaches little girl, neither seems alarmed. Entire explanet explodes, astronaut saves little girl who can control things with her mind or something. They're flying through the air, black screen, 2022. That girl's a robot. For sure, dude. I don't know. There was also a hologram cat. So, yeah. you, whatever. I don't know. Then the final biggest announcement, Horizon 2, which is officially referred to as Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, unfortunately, no date, but man, this is good. I, I'm, I'm going to save the money now. I'm going to a little bit, put a little, ugh, put a little bit away each month. And whenever this game comes out, I'll buy my PS5 then. I had a different reaction. Oh, what was your reaction? 
Well, basically, it looked like Horizon with underwater levels. So, Dude. I mean, I, I hate underwater no, levels. No, there was a single scene <laughs> where she had... No, it looked like she was swimming the whole trailer, pretty much. What are you talking about? I'm not kidding. And Greg said the same thing, so two she people was can't nuts. be wrong. Oh, my gosh. You guys are blind she was walking through deserts she was climbing icy snowy yeah, there mountains were other things but but it centered a lot around water it felt like and and it looked and it's they're not going to have underwater like levels it's not happening. better not they it better sh- not and, and the other thing is she better be able to climb up cliffs and trees too because i'm I be so mad i promise okay good well then but that, this this not having a release date was like the biggest disappointment in the entire conference to me. No, it wasn't. It was the second biggest disappointment. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're um, right. But yeah, no, it, it looks amazing. I can't wait to see because like a friend of mine at work kind of pointed out, he hopes it's good. I'm like, I don't see how it can't be. And he was speaking mostly from a story perspective because not to get spoilery at all, but not that there isn't more to go, but so they, they pose a lot of questions in the game and they answer almost all of them. And there's no real, there's, there's a couple threads, but there's not a lot of threads to pull at for a sequel. So it's like, it's mostly just a giant unknown quantity. Like, what are they going to do? I mean, obviously what? they kind of, there's this plague thing and she's going to try to fix it. Yeah. But. And they also said it in a far future America, which I thought was interesting. Well, I mean, um, again, not to spoil it, but that's already where the first one takes place. Oh, I didn't know that. See, yeah. they, they made it sound like there was a different setting that they were going further west to get to a far future America. So the original one takes place in like the uh, the Colorado area. Oh, of, and then she swims to California. Is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you nailed right, it. Okay. Great. Okay, cool. We know. So well, and the, the other thing is that um, there there did look like there was like this other opposing army sort of thing, which there wasn't really in the first. They were humans. Dude, dude, there, you got to stop saying things. You didn't even play past like the first five hours. Whatever. I you're just trying not to get spoiler. So you're telling me there was an opposing army in the first game? Kinda. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, because there was like that. I okay. Whatever. It, it looked more concerted. How about that? It looked bigger and more concerted. Yes. They're they're okay. right. They're they're going to be like the main antagonist, whereas for the a large part of the first one, just the environment was the antagonist. You had to go, That's kinda what I was getting at. Right. And oh man, when those mammoths came out, the like the woolly well not woolly, but the robo mammoths came out, I was ooh, love it. Love it. I like the part where the first ten seconds were the birds diving into the beach and then there were manta rays and crabs and crabs eating fish and then she swam for 30 minutes and that was the trailer i hate you thank you so much all right let's keep going because then we move on to black and blue balls amorphously (laughs) melding together and glowing for about 20 minutes Mm -hmm. and they reveal or they give way to reveal the console itself and it's this fairly large curvy twisty looking thing standing straight up so it's you know it's it's got a very vertical lean to it it's white exterior kind of like this envelope surrounding the interior of the console which is you know straight black to match the dual sense controller they already released a few months back um and then they reveal a digital version and it's very obvious that there's no uh bulging like you know disc tray where you would put your physical media and then they showed a bunch of like ancillary um like add-on products so like an hd camera additional uh, controllers with like charging stations a headset and then maybe like one other thing and then that was it the hd camera did you say that one i did oh Oh, the media remote that's that's, the other thing yeah that's the one i forgot um and that was it no price no date I actually have written in my notes, if they don't show a price or a release date, then this is a failed event. That's what I, that's what I wrote here. All right, so let's, let's talk about that. So yeah. we both gave it a thumbs up, but was this a successful event? You know, as we're talking about it, I'm going back to my thumbs medium. Thumbs medium? All right. You know, I don't blame you for that. I'm still going to say that I overall I think this was a success 
only in the sense that I, I, I can't prove it. And I don't even know how to go about it after, after the fact, but like, they probably never said they were going to give the, you know, they didn't renege. There was no, no like, uh, and that's the thing is, is I, I didn't follow it closely enough beyond knowing that it was going to happen on this date, mm-hmm. but everybody who covered it in the media seemed to be very happy with it and said that PlayStation set expectations appropriately, meaning that they knew that, that everyone knew this was going to be focused on games. Uh, and then you said something very like pointed to me, maybe not pointed, it's not the right word, but poignant. very uh, poignant. Yeah. I like that. Thanks, Karch. Mm-hmm. Um, was that um that you kind of considered this more of an E3 replacement than a console reveal and when i started thinking about it through that lens i was like okay maybe this wasn't as bad as i thought it was and that's what kind of brought me over to the side of like from a thumbs down to a thumbs medium okay because well. as a console reveal if you compare it and 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 when i'm putting my head is i'm comparing it to the PS4 event reveal reveal event and i think that one like knocked it out of the park and then this one was just kind of like i know nothing about this now i know nothing about this console other than what it looks like i mean that's not entirely true they have talk specs quite a bit like we have a pretty good idea based on what microsoft has talked about with the xbox series x and what you know cerny talked about uh, a couple months ago at that one video that everybody hated um <laughs> we have a decent idea of, of you know, the capabilities, but, yeah. but we don't know what the rollout looks like. So it's like all we got today, like quote unquote, all we got was what it looks like. That's all. That's all we know. We know literally what the console looks like. And that there's a digital version that was kind of a slightly out of left field, even though we keep talking about that with, um, with Xbox, I don't think anybody floated that idea regarding PlayStation. No. And it's, I think part of it is because they, they're not as focused on their streaming services and their, uh-huh. subscription services as Xbox is with Game Pass. So, I mean, I mean, it was out of left field for me. I, You know, what's funny is I was watching this event and I saw like like one PlayStation 5 and then they'd cut away to some floating different colored balls <laughs> and then all of a sudden I see two PlayStation 5s and I'm like, oh, cool, two PlayStation 5s. But then I read the text under and I was like, oh, wait, no, they're, they're, those are different. There's one with a disk drive and one without a disk drive. So, yeah. okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know, like what you, what order you wanted to talk about all this stuff in. But uh, Greg told me something interesting today because everybody says, okay, well, yeah, we didn't get price, we didn't get price, we didn't get price. Greg said that he heard a rumor or read a rumor uh, that these consoles are actually going to be priced exactly the same, but one is the the all digital is going to have a bigger hard drive and the mm. one that has physical media is just not going to have the bigger hard drive but it has the disk drive that Let's makes go sense. With that. that's that's interesting i mean cuz cuz you try to think about like how much money does that cost a disk drive i mean like well so uh, the only thing we have to go off of is the all digital version of the xbox one and uh-huh. it was a 50 dollar price difference so i'm going to assume that it's probably about 50 bucks. And I don't think that's the actual cost to manufacture, but that's like with the profit they want to make on, you know, putting it in. Do you think it would be, it would still all be SSD though, right? If it was a larger, of course. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. And that's the thing is like, you put that physical media on there, but in order to pull off all of the technical marvels that they're promising with the speed of this, solid state drive at the end of the day you are loading everything onto that drive right. so you might have a disc to like unlock your license and but you, but you're gonna install the game on the disc drive and then at that point your disc is just the key to you know having the license to the game yeah so i was thinking about that today i was like should i like my initial knee jerk was like i buy all digital these days so of course i'll get the digital version but i was like i do have like a handful of ps4 games that i bought physical like monster hunter kingdom hearts uh horizon last of us all physical and i would i mean because i'm kind of probably gonna trade in my ps4 but i might not now just so i can get the digital version and not worry about not being able to play those like six or so really good games without having to rebuy them yeah 
I, I don't know. I, I, I do kind of remember last generation when they were talking about, it may have been last generation, or it may have been when they released that all digital version. Didn't, didn't Microsoft put out some sort of program where you could go like trade your physical version in for a digital code or something like that? I mean, that would be really cool. Like a conversion program. So Sony might do something similar. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to look that up. You didn't actually have to wait for me. You like you could keep you could vamp, you so know. I had a brain fart and I thought I don't know, I wasn't expecting you to just stop talking. Sorry. All right. Sorry yeah, to overall, stop talking. Overall. Oh. So so it's basically it's like it's like we got they two don't, of them. They, sorry, they do not have that program. I, okay. that was a rumored when they came out with the all all digital. It doesn't look like it sounded too good to be true. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, overall overall good um good event. And as far as games or reveals go and like just the boom, 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 trailer after trailer, very little talking, the talking, you know, felt appropriate when like one of the, the big wigs would step up or one of the developers would introduce a game. It was, it would all flow together very nicely. Um, but yeah, as far as a console reveal event, like, I don't know. I mean, technically Microsoft hasn't done the price and release date yet either. And they really, they announced their console back in December. So we've known what it looks like, what it was called for over six months now. And, and you mentioned that, that, that it does seem like Sony and Microsoft are playing this like really intense game of chicken of uh-huh. like, who's going to go first? Because, you know, I've heard this thrown around of like, do they even know what price the consoles are going to be? Maybe they don't have the exact price, but I guarantee you there's a floor. Like of there course. is a minimum, right? I mean, they're manufacturing these things right now. Yeah. No, they've so, got SKUs. Yeah, 100%. I don't know what they're waiting for. I don't either. Well, um, I mean, how much flexibility do you think they have? I mean, I would say at most it's got to be like 50 bucks, And I don't know that that's going to move the needle for many people. Well, like, okay. So speaking of moving the needle, I, I assume you're referring, are you referring to purchasing anything or purchasing between the two? I guess purchasing between the two. Uh, so, like, did anything about this move the needle f- away from PlayStation, though? Um, like, even if you hated it, like the no. event, I mean. So, for me, it didn't move the needle away from PlayStation because I'm going to buy a PS5. Because right. I have a, me personally, this is Jason, I have a PC, I have access to Game Pass. Every Xbox exclusive is going to be day and date on Game Pass, which means I don't need an Xbox to play, you know, Game Pass games. Right. Uh, Or, I'm sorry, Xbox exclusive games. So, like, if anything, this just, to me, said, okay, there's nothing at launch that I have to have, so I don't feel the need to buy this at launch. That's what it did for me. So, it didn't move the needle away from me buying it, per se, but it did kind of make me less excited to get it at launch. Cause I just feel like what, what, okay. So what, what's coming? Here's what we know for a fact is coming at launch, not the launch window at launch with the PlayStation five Spider-Man, which is not a full game. It is essentially like a DLC expansion story jet, the far shore, and bug snacks. Those are the three titles that we know for a fact are going to be launching day and date with the PlayStation Five. Where does? And, how do we know that? Because they all said holiday twenty twenty. So I, I mean, I guess we don't know for a fact, but those are the only three games in this entire conference that said holiday twenty twenty. Gotcha. So I'm like, okay, there's no horizon. I guarantee you that's not in launch window because they did not give a date at all. They didn't no, even say 2021. But, so that's but I not guarantee they're saving it for their first, their first big Christmas. Yeah. And that's fine. It's just like that. I don't need a PS five until then. Like what? There's nothing that was like, Oh, Jason, you have to buy this in November. There's just, there's, there's nothing. Yeah. No, so, I hear you. So I'd say like as a as a console reveal, I'm a little disappointed. Now as E3, I'm super stoked for Sony. Like I am so 
I'm so excited to be a PlayStation fan. It's just that I don't know that I need this console at launch. Yeah, for sure. But no, like, yeah, as a, the, the games that they, like a lot of exclusives, like, like oh, yeah. no, no doubt. And some, a lot of them just by like PlayStation studios or worldwide studios, whatever they're calling themselves. Um, but a lot of stuff from third parties too, like that Square Enix game. I'm pretty sure is it said designed exclusively for PlayStation five. And I, I don't know because, you know, marketing terms can be very misleading. Mm -hmm. And so designed exclusively for PlayStation five could mean that it's most optimized for PlayStation five, although it's launching on other platforms, or it could mean that it's a totally console exclusive. I don't know which to be honest with you. They could come out with some marketing spin of like, look at how we take advantage of the SSD and look at these cool features, but it's only available on play- PlayStation 5. And if you get the Xbox version or the PC version, it's going to be inferior. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. They, I, they can they can spin it different ways. Yeah. But- because, you know, Project... Sorry, one more thing. Yeah. Um, Project Octopath was a, a, a Switch exclusive until it wasn't, and it's coming to PC. So just, you know, right. I, 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 don't, I don't know. Yeah, and, and you know, these days you do have to basically when we talk exclusive, we we mean like initial exclusivity too, because it matters for sales and it matters for the way that people think of a game. It's like, and Square Enix has a long history with either dealing exclusively with PlayStation or initially. So you know, uh, Final Fantasy VII, Kingdom yeah. Hearts three, you know, all those other uh, like they still don't have Final Fantasy VII. They won't for another you know year basically. Um, and Kingdom Hearts games are only just now finally making their way to Xbox consoles after all these years. Um, but yeah, it, like you said, it was a very strong showing for them in that regard. And I think that's maybe where people are coming from because at the end of the day, as dumb as it was and as like kind of salty as we might be about either the way it looks or the lack of a release date or price, like obviously those things are coming. Like right. I would have felt way more shaky if I'd only gotten half of this showing of games and then more details on the console. Because like it's just a box at that point. And I don't want another box that doesn't do anything. I want a box that Especially that, a white box that doesn't match my <laughs> entertainment center. My nothing matches in my house as far as that's concerned. Like well, we still haven't landed <laughs> on a theme, so <laughs> one day. Eclectic. You yeah. guys are big Friends fans, and, you know, that was very eclectic. So, I mean, that's not a bad thing. That's my mom. My mom has eclectic. <laughs> Orange and yellow walls. If nothing matches, it's eclectic. No, that's just disorganized. There's a difference. Okay. Okay. We suck. You're saying eclectic is intentional, but you're not even that. Exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Uh-oh. let's talk some of these games um let's do it what, what stood out to you Karch? what what are you most excited for in all of these Ooh, that's a hard one um or just what are you most excited what are you excited for in general i mean you mentioned that kina bridge of spirits is that your number one no um it looked really good it was one of the better looking games um and like i said it had it had a huge ori vibe and i love ori vibes because it's just it's just my jam it yeah. did look a little clunky though, like for for the the two brothers that came out and announced it. You know, they said they had experience in like um, animation and movies and stuff. Wait, and, I th- I'm sorry, not to cut you off, but I th- I thought that was a different game. Super, I thought that was Super, Super Brothers. Super Brothers is the name of a studio. This was Mike and Josh Greer, who are actual brothers. Oh, um, you're right, you're right, you're right. Okay, I em- apologize. Ember Lab is the uh, development studio for this. You just saved us from corrections. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no. I, the, the story, the way that the narrative was presented, at, like the old man kind of talking to her, you know, or at least about her, presumably. And you think it's like, oh, it's like a, it's like a um, master or, you know, mentor or something. But it turns out it's the bad guy. It was kind of cool. Um, oh, then, I didn't catch that. That's that is kind of cool. Yeah. He shifts to start, you know, it becomes a more aggressive kind of speech, basically, where it's like, you don't know anything and you can't stop me kind of thing. Ah. Um, but it's it's got this Disney vibe too, in addition yeah. to the other stuff. And it, it's just a segue, like something I really have enjoyed the last couple of years, but especially in the last few months, just seeing games come out. There are just so many female main characters these days. 
and I couldn't. I be noticed that. For it. I I think that there's a lot of diversity in these in these main characters. I mean, if you look at uh, like Deathloop, that's a uh, that's a black guy. Like yeah. that's you know, there's a woman, lot of like the the assa- the female yeah. assassin like counterpart to him was um, also a black woman, and just so it's just like you know, I notice it. I'm noticing it, and like totally, and I approve, and like it's fun. Like I love yeah. Aloy. I you know, I mostly like right. Ellie. Goodbye volcano. That's those are dinosaurs. That's yep. different. Dinosaur I'm, I'm people. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, that that's it's really cool. But um so let's see. What Ratchet Oh, and, and also I wanna I wanna just say that's that you kind of picked up on the same things that I did with that uh Kena Bridge of Spirits, just cartoony, cute, uh-huh. it had this serious tone, but it was super charming and then I, I did get that really Disney vibe from it, and I I, I dig it. And, and like I said, it looked a lot like, um, but in, in art style anyway, it looked a lot like Fable. So I I, yeah. I like that game. Yeah, it it just looks like it's going to take me on an adventure, you know, uh, and one I'm going to yeah. enjoy, and I love a good adventure. So. For me, I would say the games I'm most excited about. I'm going to list them and then go kind of into more detail. Yeah. I would say, in no particular order, Ratchet and Clank, because I freaking love Ratchet and Clank, man. Oh my you gosh. You played the reboot, was... right? Yeah, I played the 2016. Yeah. I have never played the older ones, but Same. I played the 20. Yeah, and I dig that. Godfall, I'm super, super stoked for. And then the last one is that Death Death Loop. I'm so. St- I mean, like I said, I, I loved. Um, Dishonored one, Dishonored two. Greg and I binged both of those games. Like we literally. St- Stayed up all night and beat uh, Dishonored two. I think it was maybe just two nights we beat it in. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember Dishonored two is like one of my greatest gaming accomplishments <laughs> because it, okay, so I've only ever gone out on Black Friday by myself once in my entire life, and I went with my mom, my sister, Lauren, my wife, and Greg, and and one of the places we went was Best Buy. And they had Dishonored there on sale for like, it was insane. It was a Black Friday deal. It was like maybe 10 bucks or something like that. So I, I or sorry, Dishonored 2. And it came with a digital copy of Dishonored 1. So I bought that. I, um, Greg and I beat it in two days. And then, so that was like Thanksgiving weekend or whatever. And then like I went back on Monday and traded it in and got 20 bucks for it. So I like made twelve dollars on this game awesome <laughs> I just, and I, I loved it dude i loved it what were you just anything talking else about? that caught your eye were you talking about death loop is that why you started talking about this yeah yeah okay. because of death loop sorry <laughs> death loop had it's it's the same studio yeah same developer same publisher and I just like got such a dishonored vibe from the mechanics, um, but at the same time, it had this like spy vibe with this serious and playful music. Um, but you saw the stealth elements and the teleportation elements, and just like something. Uh, the main character's name is Black Reef, and he said something like people hunt him for fun, and they were all masked, and uh-huh. it made me wonder. Is he some sort of like paid attraction for the the ultra wealthy that they come and hunt him and he's like in this time loop? It made me super interested in the story of the game. Yeah, uh, and I'm just like I'm I, I want to get in there and play it. And, and it was, also had this like grindhouse yes, art yes. style, and I'm just like yes, yeah that that film that 70s film drive through film kind of like mm. uh, it was really cool. Yeah. And the music was, you know, very fitting. It, just, it all it all gelled together so well. Like, nothing fell out of place. And that was if, a really well done trailer. And or, they, or exactly, show or whatever. yeah. And if they, can, if they can deliver on this promise, this promise of, like, this is what this game is going to be, it's going to be a success. I think Arcane can. Mm-hmm. I think their last three games were... I could be wrong. Somebody might point it out, but I think their last three games were Prey, Dishonored 2, and Dishonored 1. Yeah. And like I freaking love all three of those games, man, and I'm I'm stoked. It's gonna be great. I'm probably I don't know. It's between that and Ratchet and, and Clank. Like I'm I'm totally gonna. If Ratchet and Clank, did they give a date, uh, 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 even a year for that one? I don't think so. I don't think they did either. Um, 
No. That is, I don't have it noted, so I, yeah. I doubt it. But, but it was, that was like, that was one of the most impressive looking games, though. Like, obviously has a cartoony, you know, style, but like everything, oh, everything you saw when they're running through the different dimensions, that was real time because you can see it stutter. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. And it, you saw the ray tracing uh-huh. and just like, I, I, oh my gosh. I mean, the original, like the 2016 Ratchet and Clank was beautiful. So and good. I can't wait to get my hands on this. Same here. I um, don't, I don't love the marketing spin of like, they kind of alluded to the fact that that warping through worlds would not be possible without the speed of the SSD, but I just don't believe that at all. That was weird. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? Really? Yeah, I, I don't believe that. I think that was marketing. I think somebody in marketing made them say that. It seemed forced. I don't believe that, but that doesn't make me any less excited for this. I am just like, this was probably the best vertical slice we saw of any game, and it looks like more Ratchet and Clank, except for just bigger. And I'm just, I'm so stoked, man. Yeah. I'm so stoked. It's probably like the longest uninterrupted gameplay segment mm-hmm. we saw as well, which was nice because there were a few people who were like, here's some gameplay. And they pulled that Assassin's Creed nonsense, which was like, they, just, they need to stop doing that. If you can't yeah. supply it, just take it on the chin because people are going to knock you for it. They're going to be like, hey, where was the gameplay? But if you don't right. have it, you don't have it, and that's just fine. Just give it cinematic. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Just don't don't misrepresent. Be transparent. Mm-hmm. Um, put a cinematic trailer out there. Like, that's okay. It's not yeah, even transparency. Okay with just don't lie. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> some may say it's analogous, but yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, Horizon, obviously. Um, I love the first one. I'm all in for the next one. Um, what... Was there anything that, like, so both those games, Deathloop's not a sequel, but it, it kind of is, in, in a manner of speaking. You know, it's sure. like, was there something there that, like, piqued your interest, but you're still not sold on? Hmm. Let me look through these and tell you. So while you do that, I'll tell you mine, which was Returnal. Okay. So Housemark Studios is doing that, or Housemark, I don't know if it's the studios behind it or not, but anyway, Housemark, known for their, you know, like really fast paced arcadey bullet hell games. Um, I've never played Resogun, or I don't know if I've ever played any Housemark game, but I have seen them. And they're fun and people love them. They're very, always like a huge critical success, but they've had some struggles commercially with, you know, getting their games sold and stuff. Alienation, I think, was another one recently within the last couple of years. And so they said, hey, we're going to move to a bigger, you know, like a bigger C, basically just do AAA style games. Let me pull it up here. Da, 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 da. Silly name. Where is it? There it is. And so, but, but I was really digging this style. And aside from a slightly weird faced main character that looked a little like, you know, early PS4, late PS3, um, which is, you know, kind of excusable since this is their first big foray, but. I don't. I got this. She, really... she legit looked like the tall chick from Game of Thrones. She Bree, did. Yeah. I think was her name. Yeah, but like that's she did, but that's not what I was getting. I meant she just didn't look <laughs> like you know the proportions just seemed a little. No, off. No, no, I agree. I agree. But I, I, it made me wonder. Was like that the voice actress? I, I don't know. Oh, anyway. maybe. Yeah. But like, I love the whole. I love repeating things. You know, Deathloop did a similar thing. She's like waking up after she dies. But it makes me wonder with their their pedigree you can see the bullet hell and like the crazy like you know stuff going on with like just purple you know ray beams and stuff going everywhere i'm wondering if this is going to be like like a triple a roguelike where that would be cool environments are somewhat procedural and things are like you know you're just making that progress every time especially the way they talk about the environments just being different every time she wakes up yeah. Um, and I, I, I think I just said this, but it, it gives me like these Hellblade vibes because it's got that like kind of mental component to it too. Not that she has like a, like a mental condition or illness. Like, you know, it looked like a psychological thriller though. Right. Yeah. But like, but really heavy on that for something that yeah. was then just going to flip over and be like, and now here, cause here's the action. So. Right. But, um, <laughs> hold on. This is totally unrelated, but I was watching my three-year-old play Super Mario <laughs> world today and he was playing the very first level and he kept, he like, he would go to a certain point and then die. 
And then the next time, he was like, oh, I need to jump over this. And he'd jump over it, and he'd get to the next thing, and he'd die. And I was like, holy cow, this is maybe the original roguelike. <laughs> like, you go far enough to learn something, you get a little bit better, and then you got to go in there and give it another try. Yeah. He's much. playing it like a roguelike, I swear. That's funny. Anyway. Um, yeah, I know. Returnal looked neat, and um, and it's definitely one that I would I would be open to checking out. Um, but for me, if you were if you were going to ask that question, what's something that looked kind of caught your eye but you're not sold on? Honestly, I'd say the new Spider Man, um, because for one, I never finished the original one because I I eventually felt like I got to the point where I had learned unlocked all the mechanics and then it felt very repetitive. And Insomniac did the um, oh geez, I'm blanking here. They did the, what's the name? The superhero guy. No, Sucker Punch Holden. did that. Sucker Punch, never mind. Never mind then. That, um, that deflates infamous. my whole theory. You're talking about but infamous. I got these Sucker Punch vibes of like, okay, well, I go into this thing, and then I'm in an encounter, and then I defeat these people, and then I move on to the next thing, and then eventually I get a boss fight. And I, and I get that's kind of like the way games work right that's like the formula yeah. um but at the same time i feel like the best games m- make force you to not notice the formula uh-huh. in a way and this one didn't and now we're just getting more of that and it's not even a full game and then especially if they try to tr- charge 60 bucks for it like honestly with the way they're pitching this i almost feel like it should be free to anyone who already owns the game or maybe like a pack-in with a console or something like that because it's not a full experience it's it's essentially dlc for the original spider-man 2018 yeah i mean it's not it's not so i don't want anybody to draw like a comparison to the existing dlc for spider-man because this by all accounts so far, it's only one day later, but by all accounts, this is going to be a lot more like um, Uncharted Lost Legacy, where it does have a good 15 to 20 hours it's to it. It's standalone. Right. You think it's going to be that long, 15 to 20 hours? Well, I'm just going off of uh, Lost Legacy. If you did okay. everything, you could get that much time out of it. But what was like the main campaign? I thought it was uh, closer to like 10, 12. Probably something like that, yeah. Okay. But guess what? I don't want to play a Spider Man game for that much longer anyway, because everything you just said I agree with. I, I did need it. And it was it was fun. And it was just a smidge too long because of those things that you said. But overall it was decent. I just It was good. Aside from the story, which I just I've never connected with Spider Man very much. Um I I just don't see how they can bring me back into the hole. So unless it is some kind of pack in or it's very reasonably priced. I will probably skip it as well. Same. I, I don't have any desire to go back into into that world. Right. So. Although Miles seems like a very cool protagonist. Isn't that the same guy from the um, Spider-Man multi- into the multiverse or what, what's the, the name spi- of that? Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, Spider-Verse. Yes, is that is. the same? I yeah. mean, Miles Morales what? is the other Spider-Man. Like, there's okay. Peter Parker, and then there's him. Like, anytime that it's not Peter Parker, it's always him, as far as I'm aware. Which is pretty neat. Like, I started watching that with Luke, and then he mm-hmm. just, like, wasn't interested enough to finish it. But I think, um, he's, I think he's technically... Anytime it's Ultimate Spider-Man, it's him. Okay. But Yeah, I mean, it was, it was cool. So, like, that was a cool little tie-in there, I guess. And I don't know... Like, I, this is going to make me sound so dumb, but was Miles in the... Spider-Man 20. <laughs> he was. In fact, do you, did you get to any of the parts where you had to control Mary Jane? Yeah. So there's a part where you have to control him as well in a similar fashion. Where like, I think so. Okay, okay. I just didn't know if that was Miles for sure because there was such a gap between when I played that game and when I watched Into the Spider-Verse that I couldn't remember that character's name, but yeah. Yeah, there's... I mean, most... Unfortunately, Miles is kind of spoilery. Like, to talk too much about his involvement in the... Um, yeah, don't. Game. So yeah, don't. I won't. I won't. But the, but like I said, that's one that I'm like my interest is peaked, but I'm not sold. But also by the sheer fact of his game coming out, it's like oh, guess what? He has Spider-Man powers, so it's not that you know. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um. So uh, everything. This is the PS5 event. But do you think that any of these games are going to come out 
simultaneously for this current gen, so the PS4 or 360. Or, excuse no, me, um, you I know? don't. They None made a them. big deal of saying that they believe in console generations and that not they... just the exclusives, though. Like. Like you think none of these are going to come out for oh, the previous one? Okay, well then that's a really good point. Mm-hmm. Um, like Gran Turismo, see. obviously it's going to be PS5 only. Spider Man, right? Pro- Spider Man could be PS4 too. That's Marvel money, you know. That's yeah. that's a lot that they have to want to make. Obviously, Horizon is going to be PS5 only. But I'm looking, man. I I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think any of these are going to be cross gen. Mm-hmm. And it's it's really interesting because I I think they would have been really intentional with the games that they chose to show, show and I think that none of these are going to be cross gen and I think they they probably made that I mean I'm not going to sit here and say there will be no cross gen games I think there will be cross gen games there probably are some that we already know for a fact that are going to be cross gen um, but that said I don't think any of the ones that are shown here will be cross gen gotcha. All right. Yeah, I'm not and sure I, on the answer myself. I'm like, maybe I, I could see some of them obviously aren't, uh, they're not all incredibly demanding. And yet even the lesser games, quote unquote, still look so good. Like, yeah. And you got to wonder, can that run on a PS4? So even with the compressed, uh, you know, 1080p stream, they still look, still look pretty good. Oh yeah. I can't wait to, cause by the time I have a goal to have a large 4k TV, in my living can room. I, right? Can I help you pick it out? Of course. Okay, great. I'm you, um, man. Says, I already have it picked out. So, that's good. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be able to experience this as best as I can, you know, when it launches anyway, or when I get it. I'm very it. excited. I'm so excited. Because I'm sure I'll probably acquire this no later than a year into its life okay. cycle. Because I, at, at launch, I don't see myself feeling the, the you know, the pull, but, but a year in, something's going to come out. And I'm going to be like, oh, oh yeah. man, I need that. I need that. I need that. Right. Exactly. I mean, same here. Same here. Yeah. I say it now that it's like, oh, I'm not going to do it. But I, for all I know, I'm such a sucker. I'll probably buy a lunch. So, I mean, and, and not to mention, here's the other component that I, at least I have to keep in mind. The best deals for trading in the PS4 Pro are probably going to be close to launch. That's true. And, you know, we don't know how much longer, and it sounds cynical to say, but we don't know how much longer GameStop's going to be in business. And they're usually, even though they're kind of notorious for giving bad trade-in deals, they're probably, like, still the best in terms of trade-in deals. Unless you want to try to sell to, like, a Craigslist rando, which I have no desire to do. I just... I will take the fifty dollar hit to just get it out of the way and go. Yeah, I just gotta drive life. down to the store five minutes from here, and I'm done with it, and I got my credit. Exactly. And, they, and so. you know, it's, they're gonna be they're gonna be courting people. You know, if they know it's good for them, they're gonna be wedding people courting, like you know, like oh, yeah. enticing. Right, right, right. With their- I would think so. I would really think so. I mean, and they make a lot of their money off of of used hard of used things in general, be it software or hardware. Um, and especially with like this introduction of all digital consoles, their ability to do that is shrinking. Mm-hmm. I would as- imagine they want to do everything they can to sustain their business model. So giving an enticing deal to upgrade to PlayStation 5, I would imagine there's probably a wave of people who have waited this long to upgrade to the PS4 or the PS4 Pro. So if you can get an influx of those sell some ps5s and then get a bigger margin on the trade-in of the playstation 4 like it makes sense so if they give a good deal kind of right there at the generation change then maybe i'll get a ps5 at launch we'll see and if you're not sure if you should get a ps4 or a ps5 right now because you skipped out entirely go check out our first episode of never free to play debates where jason and Greg talk about this very subject Nice pitch. Thank you. Should you buy a PlayStation 4 in June 2020? I think even given everything that we uh, learned yesterday, it's still it's still totally applicable. Yeah, for sure. Like this this console, the this being a PS4 or the Pro, doesn't matter, is going to have some of the longest legs, you know, like as far as value. Like, like if you get a PS4 three years from now, that's not a bad deal. You know, like yeah, that is a totally. good that is a good thing to pick up. Those games are not going anywhere, both both physical or digital. You know, the prices will only go down. Um, and if you buy them digital, <sighs> it sounds like you'll be able to play them when you eventually do get your PS5, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Okay, sorry, I just had a little mini freak out because I thought my audio wasn't recording anymore, but it is. I mean, we got Zencaster. You're fine. Yeah, we got Zencaster to back up, but I wanted it in Reaper. Yep. Um, all right, so we can get a console price or a date. What do you think it's going to be? Okay, so there have been some rumors, some substantiated rumors even, that there was a launch, and you told me this right before we recorded, that there was a launch page for the PlayStation 5 that was up, pre-order page, that was very, very, very briefly up, and that the price on there, it's rumored, was $600, but I, I just can't imagine Sony repeating the sins of the past with the ps3 was launched at six hundred dollars it sold poorly at launch they eventually backed off that price not to mention we're in an even worse economic environment i can't imagine it's going to be six hundred dollars so i'm going with 499 for the um full ps4 and for probably 450 for the all digital that's my prediction what about you um, I mean, this kind of stuff's really outside my wheelhouse, so I'm just going to go ahead and agree with you because it sounds about right. I still think 50, I know you said the, the Xbox digital had a $50 difference, but that was well into the console's life cycle where they could be a lot more flexible with price. Um, $50 for just the Blu-ray disc drive, which is not new tech. So I can't imagine, I just don't see that being enough. I mean, not that they won't take a hit period, you know, like a loss on the console, but it seems like a lot. It seems like a lot just to entice people to, although you have to imagine they make that back. I mean, obviously they always make it back on the other side of the software, but right. obviously with a digital only, they make it back even harder because <laughs> they're going to that, get, that's what I've heard is yeah. that. Yeah. So if it's like, even if it were to be a hundred dollar or more difference, like th- at that point you've locked people into your ecosystem in terms of, you know, the buying the, the software. So you're making great margins on all of that software. So it's, Maybe they can afford to give a little bit more of a discount there. Maybe. But, you know, you imagine like a million sold in the first, you know, six months, which is not an unreasonable figure at all. If you lose 50 or or $100 on that, that's $50 million or $100 million. I mean, the math isn't as easy, but we'll just do that for now. Because, like, yeah. you know, there's cuts and there's so much that goes on to the distribution and production of it. Um, and then how much money Sony actually sees on the other side. It might even be worse than that for all I know. But well, what I've heard from like, you know, the 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 common knowledge is that every console ever has been sold at a loss, and they make it up within two software sales or whatever. Nintendo, huh? Except Nintendo. Right, 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 right. So, so that's always been the common knowledge with PlayStation, though. And if I recall correctly, like they were only selling it at like maybe a ten dollar or less loss per console at ps4 launch so it's it's not like it's a substantial loss so i don't think these companies price it such that they're losing like 50 to 100 dollars per per console i don't think that's even sustainable for them so um i have to imagine i i just can't see the price difference being that much just because i know what the like a ballpark on what the hardware is so that's why i think it's not gonna be $100 $100 or $200 difference. I think it's going to be 50 max. So that's why I say 499 and and 450 years. I'm going to bump right, it up. I'm going to bump it up to 550 500. 550 is just such a weird number. I can't see him doing it from a marketing standpoint. I know that sounds weird to say. I just I just can't. It does because that stuff doesn't factor in. Like I I just I value things the way I value things. And it certainly isn't because the way the number looks like the whole American four ninety nine instead of five hundred dollars, you know, four ninety nine ninety nine. So, you know, it's like a one penny difference has never affected me in any way whatsoever. So I can't, well, really... you know, you, you don't think it does, but it might. That's true. I am stupid. So. <laughs> you just you just never know. So when do you think it's coming out? There's no way it's not coming out in November. I can't narrow it down any further than that because I just, you know, I'm not an expert. But there's no way it's not coming out before Black Friday. I mean, that makes sense. So. 
We'll see though. They, they what, promised... what, do you have a different prediction? You, no. I mean, they say holiday 2020. I just can't see it coming out any sooner than any sooner than November, but I can't see it coming out any later than Black Friday. So yeah, I don't remember the last console launch I participated in slash remember was the Switch, which was in March. Um, right. Same. And so I can't remember. Like I can't draw from previous experience. I mean, at the moment. But yeah, I, I mean, wanted to strangle GameStop employees for the Switch launch, just kind of okay. on the side. Because first of all, I lived in Ohio, and it snowed that day. So I was fully prepared, because I had gone into GameStop earlier that day to see if I could pre-order. And they said, no, if you don't already have a pre-order, then you're lining up at midnight, and we're going to give the first X people, you know... Uh, tickets or whatever okay so i'm like okay cool so that's their process whatever whatever so then i go to gamestop at like 10 30 p.m the night before and i have on my ll bean boots and i have on my thermal under garment and i have on my pants i have my ll bean coat and i'm like layered up and i have my hat and i'm like ready to rock and roll because i live in ohio and it's snowing and it's freaking cold and even though it's march or whatever and i'm ready to stand outside in the cold and 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 weather the elements because no one else is going to be crazy enough to do that i'm going to get one of these things I'm going to stand out there for two hours if it, if that's what it takes. So I go down there and I get there and the lights are on. There's nobody lined up outside. I'm like, weird. Okay. I'm the first person here. Great. Ooh. And so as I, as I approach the door, I notice they have like tables set out with pizza and like the, the boxes look like they've been opened and reshut and they have like two liters of soda. And I go in there and I'm like, what's going on guys and they're like oh well you know we had people lined up at 7 a.m so we just gave the tickets out early because they were you know standing there and i like i wanted to explode i was like this is not what the process was if it was based on people showing up early i was there the day before why didn't you give me a ticket then like (laughs) come on now i was cold then too right exactly and then and then i had to do the thing where i didn't have a switch for whatever it was three days and i just kind of like kept sharking locations and they were like well people have 48 hours to pick up their pre-order so call back in 48 hours because if no one's picked it up then we can sell it and so like at that 48 hour mark i went and lined up at like six o'clock in the morning outside of a GameStop that I to- was told the day before off the record that they had one Nintendo Switch that somebody pre-ordered that they hadn't picked up yet. So if they weren't there the next morning, they could sell it. And I went at like 6 a.m. and I stood outside for like three hours until they opened or whatever it was, and I got that Switch. I feel so bad because mine just fell into my lap. Yeah, everything comes easy for you, Karch. Some people have to work for things. You I know? fall backwards into success my whole life. And it, it's not fair, but that is the way it is. Yeah, it is the way. What are we going to do? Some people have to work hard for their lovely family and their nice job and whatever. And, you know, you know, some people just, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah, whatever. Uh, but I'm losing my hair, so. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You look like Nick Scar. You look like a young Nick Scarpino. A don't, young don't, Nick Scar- you know, please. You have, a, you have a lovely hairline, my friend. Um, so they showed a lot of, like, accessories do you think any of those are going to come with the console no no aside from the controller obviously yeah you get one controller and that's it i i honestly you'd be lucky to get a charging cable i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> usbc the controller uh, yeah it? yeah for sure on the controller usbc I, yep. I i feel like that's been confirmed yeah i'm starting to get a few more devices a few more cords it's really nice because oh it's so good i know i love it i love usbc i love that it's symmetrical you know mm-hmm. that's great it's the best part who cares how char- fast it charges? It's symmetrical. Exactly. All right. Do you have anything else you want to mention before we move uh, on to the spoiler cast? No, I think we can go on then. All right. So, but, well, I, I think we should take a break here. Like, let's take a pee break. Let's take a drink break. Good we idea. can edit it and then, like, come back and do the spoiler cast. Good idea. All right. Okay. So, we'll Don't, be back pause any recording just let it keep going i will okay all right ladies and gentlemen we'll be back in just a short while you won't even notice except that we told you okay and we're back and i have refilled my water 
and I have refilled my wine, and I've refilled my mixed drink, and I hear ice clinking, I assume Karch has refilled his iced coffee. Yep. So, let's get cozy, and let's dive